Good morning, Nineveh family. We're excited to have you join us one more time right in your homes. Give God your best praise right where you are. Give God your best praise. I want you to do me a favor. Share this stream. Share this message with somebody. I don't want you to give God praise alone. Amen, somebody. Sister Shanette Wynn, our youth director, and, and of course, Minister Jamar is here with us. So put your hands together right now and magnify the Lord. Amen. We're always happy to have with us that magnanimous, that gorgeous First Lady of Nineveh Baptist Church. Amen. Hey, sweetie Goodman, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, you want to know about my week? My week was good. I had the pleasure of um, attending a Bible study with Mother Pritchett. Now, Mother Pritchett is about 84 years old, and she is hilarious to me because she loves the Lord. And she started out teaching for about an hour. Now it's dropped down to 20 minutes because she wants to ask us 40 minutes of questions, and we don't know nothing. <laughs> And she gets mad at us, and she'd be like, have y'all not said it? Have y'all not said it? But she's so excited about it, and that's what makes me tickle. <laughs> so I checked myself this week to think about, am I that excited about the Lord and about his goodness, even in the bad times and She's still excited, and she's gone through some things, and she's had some rough things to go on in her life, but she's still excited. So I honor Mother Pritchett today on the show for how she has encouraged me to check myself and make sure I'm excited for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing today, get up and be excited about the Lord our God. Amen. Oh, 
to magnify and praise the Lord. Give God some praise right at home, somebody. Amen, amen. At this time, uh, we have a prayer coming from our very own Tatiana Holt. Amen. Give her a round of praise as she comes to the screen. Good morning, church. My name is Tatiana, and I'm currently attending St. Andrews University in North Carolina. I am product of Nineveh's youth department. Please bow your heads and close your eyes as I pray for you. Lord Jesus, we come to you. We pray that you continue to give us wisdom and knowledge. We pray that we continue to seek you in everything we do and that you would just continue to heal our country and just give us supportive leaders that will fulfill everything we need. We pray that you would just be with us and that you would guide us and that you would see us and that we would seek you in any form that we need to. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that prayer. At this time, we also have some of our youth and young adults that have a brief greeting for some of our Nineveh family. Amen. Hey, everyone. My name is Ariana. I go to Berea College, and I am a product of the Nineveh Youth Department. I just want to tell you guys to stay safe and remember to wear your mask and to wash your hands frequently during this pandemic. And have a blessed day. Cameron Bass. I attend Alabama a and University. I'm also a product of Nineveh's Youth Department. I would like to take this time to welcome you to this uh, week's church service. I pray that you gain something from the service that will carry you on through the week. I pray that you look out for your loved ones and just keep, keep them safe. Just tell them you love them every day. Amen, amen. We're thankful to see them and hear them. Amen. And thankful that they're away in college thinking about little old us. Amen, somebody. They haven't forgotten about their roots and they're still Ninevites. Amen. We pray for them, cover them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's get back into the praise and worship. Lift your voices with us. Be our extended choir right where you are.
to deserve the love and mercy you show. But your grace was strong enough to pick us up, and you made a way. When our past was against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a is that I'm not really worthy of anything that I have. But Jesus, but God, he made, he makes ways when I don't deserve ways. He opens yes, doors when I don't deserve them. Yes, and the doors that he opens, no yes, man can shut. And the who, and the doors that he closes, no yes, man can open. And so God, we just say thank you thank right God. now. We just say thank you for opening thank doors. You. We say thank you for making ways. Because, God, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. Yes, Lord. But you've been ever so faithful. Thank you, you've been ever so gracious and ever so kind. Thank you, oh, God. Join me this morning in the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, Matthew 27. Now, I know it's not Easter time, but we're going to go back to that portion of the Bible because I do believe that there is a word there. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, beginning at verse 15, we find these words. He says, now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. They answered, crucify him. 
Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they all shouted all the louder, crucify him. For the time that is ours, I want to chew on this thought, a power problem. A power problem. Spirit of the living God, we are hungry this morning, God. We need you to move in ways we've not seen. So God, we just pray that you would send your spirit and you would rain down a rima word from heaven. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just, just a week or so ago, there was a, a hurricane that hit the Gulf Coast. And I've got a couple of friends that live down there, and one of the things that I keep hearing is they still don't have any power. They're going on weeks now, and there's no power. And so they've gotten used to sitting in the dark. And as they've gotten used to sitting in the dark, when they walk outside, it's like their eyes want to revolt. Anybody ever woke up and the light just turns on instantly and you, the, you look, you're, you're like, oh my God, turn the light off. I can't deal with this right now. And so they've gotten used to sitting in the dark. Well, at the beginning of time, when man fell from grace, the power got turned off. We got disconnected from the source and we got used to living in the dark. And after living in the dark for such a, a while, when the light showed up, when the light got turned back on, man's instinct was to reject the light. Because man had not gone, grown accustomed to living in the light. And, so, and see, one of the things is when we have grown accustomed to something, often we think that it's normal. It's the same way that children can grow up in dysfunction and they can think it's normal. It's the same way that some of us grew up eating bologna sandwiches and we thought it was normal, regardless of you know, high blood pressure. We grew up eating fried chicken and regardless of, of how many calories, we thought it was normal. And so when we eat stuff that doesn't have salt on it, we ask, we say, what's wrong with this? This is not good. And so what we grow accustomed to becomes normal, whether it be healthy or not. And so today in our text, we are drawn to Jesus as he has been betrayed. And after he's been betrayed, he's being drugged from judgment hall to judgment hall. I know you know the story. And as he's been drugged to judgment hall to judgment hall, he makes it to Pontius Pilate's house. And when he gets to Pontius Pilate's house, what we discover is the chief priests and all the crowd are calling for Jesus' head. But Pontius Pilate sees no fault in Jesus. He says, well, what has this man done to you? And they make these claims, and, and even the scripture says that they know that Pontius Pilate, that the, the chief priest and all the other guys want him out of envy because he has threatened their power. He's threatened their influence. He's, he's threatened the, the stronghold that they've had on the people. See, what happened at the beginning of time was when we got disconnected, God issued a couple of patches. Now, I don't know if you know anything about electricity, but if for, for a long time, if you, if you jump out a system or you have something that has a patch, if it's patched for too long, it will cause more problems. If you've got a hole in your roof and you patch it and you don't fix it, after a while, if it keeps raining, it's going to cause a bigger problem. If, if, if you have a problem with your air conditioner and you try to patch it and you don't fix it, after a while, that leak is going to get worse. If you've got a problem in your plumbing and you, don't, and you patch the hole but you don't fix it, after a while, you're going to have a flood in your living room. And so God issued a patch. He told them to go to the temple and to make sacrifices. But that was never enough. And so as time went down, as all of us know, he sends Jesus Christ. He sends a perfect, blameless man to exchange in our place and in our stead. But when the perfect solution shows up, because man had been in the dark for too long, we rejected him. They were sent for the Jews, and it was the very Jews that called for his head. And so when I looked at today's text, I was interested because he was at Pontius Pilate's house. Pilate does not want to persecute him, but he has a custom. He says, at Passover, I let go one of the prisoners. And when I let him go, I let the people choose who I let go. And so you had this guy named Jesus Barabbas, as the NIV reads. And you have Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Barabbas, his name Barabbas literally means son of the father. Now, we know Jesus is the son of the father. Well, Jesus Barabbas was an insurrectionist. He caused riots in the town. He was an accused murderer. He, he had been wreaking havoc on these people's lives for as long as they could remember. And then you had Jesus who had been healing the sick, who had been saving the lost, who had been making lame men walk and causing blind men to see. 
He had done nothing to the people that would be bad except threaten their power because the people had been bound by religion. They had gotten comfortable with religion. They had gotten comfortable being in a place of familiarity. How many of us have gotten comfortable at home? We've been out of church for six months. We got, we got comfortable not having to put on our pants to get on the Zoom call. Got comfortable not having to go to the beauty shop. Got comfortable not coming to church. Got comfortable not reading our Bibles. Got comfortable doing all the things that we know we should be doing because we've been in the dark. And so since we've been sitting in the dark, I promise you when the light comes back on, will we respond well or will we respond, turn it back off, turn that light back off? Because if you, if you think about it, you think about it, these people were in need of a savior. We had a problem, we had, we had run up a bill that we could not pay. We, it didn't matter how hard we worked. It didn't matter how, how much blood we tried to shed. There was nothing that we could do to save our own souls, and the solution showed up, and the response was get rid of him. Get rid of him, because we had gotten comfortable. But what I also thought about is that, that the chief priests had made a living out of taking advantage of the people out of teaching and telling them to do certain things, and they had gotten comfortable because what they said went. And this Jesus fellow was challenging that. He was challenging that. And dare I suggest to you that as we are, as people of color in the United States, there are gonna be people who get upset with us turning the lights on the truth because it's uncomfortable. But does that mean that we spend our lives in the dark? Does that mean that we never walk outside? Does that mean that we live lives that never challenge anything, that never go anywhere because God has called us to live in the light? So Jesus shows up, and Jesus is on trial. And they're asking him, is he the Messiah? And he says, you say that I am. I don't have to respond. You say that I am, that's what they believe I am. And they sat there. So the Jews are screaming for his head. And Barabbas is, is, is sitting there, and Barabbas is, is this terrible person in comparison to Jesus. And, and in all of that, Barabbas, whose name means sons of the, son of the Father, who has murdered people, who has caused riots, who has probably been the equivalent of being a gang leader, the people choose him. But y'all know what, what I realized is that was a lot like Satan. If you look at the Antichrist, you look at Satan, you look at his MO, he tries to get you as close, as close as possible. Get, let me get you as close as possible to what Jesus, I'm gonna even give him the same name. And you've been so comfortable around him, he's been around for so long that surely this must be right. Because this is where we've lived, this is where we've abided, this is, this is normal. And so we've gotten comfortable in dysfunction so that when, when, when correction comes, we reject it. And so I, I, I really want us to think for a minute because sometimes we do, we do things in church, at home, in the neighborhood that, that God never called us to do. We do things in church out of tradition or we do things in our families out of tradition and, and it, it couldn't be further from right. But we've gotten so comfortable in the dysfunction that when somebody challenges that, we, we get ready to fight and we, we get angry and we, we, we're, we're upset and the truth of the matter is God is calling us out. God is calling us to freedom. He's calling us to walk in the, the way that he has created us to walk, but we are afraid because it hurts, because it's going to make me change. And dare I say to you that part of your Christian journey is that God would evolve you, that he would bring you out of what you were into what he designed you to be. And if you stay in the place of darkness, you very well could miss the Jesus. Very well could miss the salvation. Very well could miss the, 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 the best thing that could ever happen to you. And so what I want to encourage you to do that today is I want you to take a long, hard look at your life and ask yourself, am I look, is living in the light or am I sitting in darkness? Have I gotten comfortable outside of what he's designed me to be or am I walking after purpose 
Because the very guys who were charged with the souls of the people, the leaders, got it wrong. And so if the leaders could get it wrong, you know you could get it wrong too. But one other thing that I thought about, I, I was sitting here with this text and I was, I was kind of sifting through it. Another thing that I thought about is that when, when we get comfortable, we become the little G-O-Ds in our life. We become the God in our life. And if we're God in our life, we call the shots. And often we get afraid of that word submission but submission will change your trajectory. Because if you're the God of your life, you can't go any further than, than this street. But if God is the God of your life, if you're walking with Christ and you've accepted his way and you're doing it his way and you're walking after what he's called you to be, the sky is literally not the limit. You can go to the sky, the stars, and beyond. But a lot of us, are afraid of letting the reins go. And as long as we're holding on to those reins, we can't go anywhere. So as, as I, I was thinking about it, they called for Jesus' head. And as they were calling for Jesus' head, what they wanted was to get rid of Jesus. Because if they could get rid of Jesus, everything could remain the same. But I want you to remember this, and this is what I love about this story, is that even though they were trying to get rid of Jesus, they didn't understand that their folly or their mistakes or their craziness was calculated into God's plan. And so not only do they kill Jesus and they believe that they have won, he still gets up three days later. He still rises and he still saves the souls of everybody else. But what I really love is that Pontius Pilate got it. He must really be the son of God. The centurion standing at the cross, got it. He must really be the son of God. All of these people who he didn't even send him to the earth to receive, got the message. And to be honest with you, the Jews missed it, but he made room for you and me. And because he made room for me and you, I want to invite you to take a pivot. Maybe you do believe in Jesus, but you haven't quite been doing what he asked you to do. I want to invite you to make a pivot to this morning. Maybe, maybe you're the saved of the saved. You're over-churched but you've gotten comfortable in religion. I want to encourage you to step out of religion and to get into what God is trying to say in this season. Maybe you don't even know about this Jesus guy that I'm talking about, but I want to encourage you this morning to get to know him. And if you don't know him, I want you to email me. We'll put my email down in, in the comments. I want to encourage you that Jesus didn't just die for the people that rejected him. He died for you. He died for me. And really, he died for those who cursed him. Even Judas got to eat at the table. And so church, more than anything this morning, I want you to see that you've got to let go of the power. And if it's not salvation that you get this morning, I hope it's freedom that you get. Because as long as you're bound by your ideas and what has been, you're not living in the fullness of God. The scripture was not lying when it said, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. But so many of us live without it because we never let go. We never let go of the power. There was a power problem in that room. And I dare to tell you that there's a power problem right now in our cities, in our state, and y'all better believe in this country. So I, I hope this morning that you'll shift. Amen. Continue to give God praise right where you are. Right where you are. This is the best time of the service. This is the time where we all can participate. Amen, somebody at home. It's offering time. Um, it's the time we can give to God. Amen. All the blessings he's given to us. I don't know about you, but when I get my paycheck, I look at it and I said, God, I'm blessed. I thank you for what you've given me. And all he has for is a small portion, just 10% of what he's already given us. So at this time, you have three ways to give. First is we have technology, church. You can give via Cash App. None of us Cash App is going to be the dollar sign, capital N, I N V E H, capital M, capital B, capital C. 
Also, you can mail in your tithes and offerings to the church. The address is 1067 Street North, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. And then you can come on by the church on Sunday between 10 a.m. and 12 noon. Somebody will be here to greet you and accept your tithe and offering. Come on, give it to God because he's blessed us enough. Amen. Somebody give God some more praise right where you are.
Cause he won't give up on you. He's a